Hello again. 25th November, I'm recording this at 10.45pm. And day three. The struggle continues. Please refer back to the previous two videos if you don't know exactly what this is all about. Very important you see the first two videos. Anyway, since it's a weekend, and there's probably not going to be an update from external agencies, as they say, I thought I'd give you a few views on where Barker and Dagnam Council are going wrong, since when I tell them, they ignore me. So, I've made a few notes, that's why I'm looking down all the time. Um, staff training. From what I've seen, it seems to be rather dire. Some people tell me the staff are being fully trained, but when you ask people, like, I phoned up on a couple of times to try and get through to the head of a directorate, and the people on the front line did not know what a directorate was. So therefore, they're not being trained on Barker and Dagnum's corporate structure, and they just don't, if they don't know the structure, you don't know who's responsible for what. So how can you put these people on the front line? And these are supposed to be fully trained customer service agents. And I'm not talking just on the main number, I'm talking on repairs and every other section that you want you want to be transferred to another number because their voicemail system or the voice menu system, can you put, put through to something and you say it and it goes, goes to the wrong place most of the time. And there's no, once you've said cancel and it doesn't cancel, you have to go through to someone and you probably spent four or five minutes on the phone at this stage and in my experience most of the time you go through to someone who's someone that was voicemail and then you have to stop hang up start again so to say it takes two hours to get through to the right person or to get to talk to someone is not an understatement sometimes you can be really lucky except if it's coming from my number because i've tested this I've called the council from an alternate number that I've got and it gets through a lot quicker than my number. So all started a few years ago, all this, when they made me vexatious because I wanted to find out what sort of phone system they were using. Because I've worked with phone systems and most of the time they don't have to be set up to be private. You just tick a box and publish a telephone number. So staff training, back to Dagenham Council. Um, mental illness training, as I mentioned previously. I've been advised that oh, all our staff have been trained in mental health, mental illness awareness. Mm. I'd like to know the numbers. Probably not any point in putting an FOI in because they probably do a section 40 in vexatious complaint and, and not answer me anyway. But hey, anyone watching this, ask them. See how many people have been on the mental health awareness training. Um... Another thing that's wrong with Barking Dagen Council is openness. When you do get an answer, this is like three years ago when I asked them about their phone system. It went on for weeks. They don't give you a straight, honest, open answer. They try to give you an answer min meeting the minimum needs of the question. In fact, that's another point. They don't. If you ask several questions on one email, I tend to find that they will answer what they want on the email. If it's lower down on the email, they won't read it all. They'll start answering the first few questions. So, and I've tested that by putting bits down the bottom of an email that's very important, and they've basically overlooked it. And on the phone system, Bark and Dagnum, issue private numbers or advertise private numbers when they contact you which is a bit odd in my book for what's called a public organization so why aren't they actually advertising a number they've tr i've tried to get this answer and it varies from we're not going to tell you to our phone system is so old and yet when i read something from their internet a couple of years ago saying they were going to go to an all-mobile system and queried that. 
Oh no, that was only an idea we were playing with. They didn't even know where I got their information from. But all public organisations, not just Barking Dagon Council, all public organisations should issue a public facing number when they contact you. It's a public body. Why are they allowed? It should be a criminal offence to withhold your number from a public organisation. Except for certain circumstances. And that would be like really rare national defence issues like that. General day-to-day advertiser number. Even if it's not a directly contactable number, it should be a number that you can put in your phone book and it will recognise it as a council number. But generally, I would advise it should be the main contact number. If you're being called from a department, it would be good if you had a department-wide contact number. So you didn't have to go through the menu system every time to get put through to the wrong person or the wrong department. So general contact numbers, department contact numbers. Then it goes into a department call centre or call group and then someone in that department at least will pick up. At the moment you waste time. They don't actually design the phone system for someone that's busy and working. In fact I've been told by Barkin and Dagenham Council on several occasions that they plan that 90% of residents are unemployed. So this is the reason why they put people at risk by just turning up for repairs or turning up for gas safety checks without writing and without planning. That is not good. It should be under health and safety at minimum. Anyway, um, and another thing that Bark and Dagnum seem to do, I can't speak for everyone else. I've worked for you know, six or seven councils and I've not seen this happen anywhere else, but I can't say this doesn't happen anywhere else. Um, they don't believe what customers tell them. Um, they treat it with contempt. For example, I remember putting a repair in once, and I stopped doing it after this, and I diagnosed the fault of repair, because I'm not stupid, you know, I can't remember what I put down, but I said, please make sure you put down it's this, this, and this that needs replacing, because they'll need to order a part. And when the repair person came around, this was years ago, before they started blocking the repairs and changing the system and not being able to get scheduled diary because people don't call back on disclosed numbers and they don't leave a voicemail when they call back. See the previous video. Um, when the repair person came round, he started walking all around the house and doing full investigations about what the issue was. And I said, well, didn't you get any notes on it? Because I told him exactly what the issue was, because I spent like three days diagnosing it. And they said, oh, no, we have to take the notes off because we can't trust what you say. Not me personally, I don't think, but they have to come round and investigate. At the end of the day, it was what I told them on the notes. But they just spent like two hours trying to find out what it was because they had to go through a checkbox system. Surely it would have been quicker to leave the notes on then the engineer comes round and sees what the notes say and then see if I was right. And then they can eliminate that straight off rather than do all the other bits and pieces. Anyway, that's the little whinge. Barking and Dagnum, customer services. Last time I checked the corporate structure, there was not customer services director. See previous video. I know I've mentioned this. Part of the issue with Bark and Dagnum Council is the fact they haven't got a customer services director. It's just someone that deals with complaints, and that's it. And even that's been restricted. You can't contact complaints by phone anymore. It's only mail and email. What customer services complaints department doesn't allow direct phone communication? That's bizarre. Um, so they need to reinstate a customer services director and they need to have direct control over complaints and all customer services issues and report directly to the chief exec. Only then can customer services, and I'm talking customer services director, above all other department heads. So they can tell 
all departments how they are supposed to be working. Melanis, well, we will have the customer services director as a director, but he won't be above anyone else. And so he can't tell anyone else, or she can't tell anyone else, what to do. No, they need to be above everyone apart from the chief exec so that they can actually turn around and say, well, this is wrong, you need to do this. No discussion. If the customer services director says, you're doing it wrong, you need to do it this way, they have to do it that way. Um, that's about it. It's a short one tonight. As I say, it's the weekend, and I'm not going to bore you to death. So the only other bit I've got is day three, £9 weight loss so far. Um, thanks to a friend of mine, I've gone shopping this afternoon. Without her, I would not be able to go out. I would not be able to get shopping. No one at the council seems to care. But £9 weight loss, went out, got some milk, got some coffee, got food for the cat. No food for me. Walked all the way around the supermarket, wasn't even tempted to eat. So if people think I'm joking about this, please do ask around. People that know me know that once I dig my heels in, I dig my heels in. So, thank you for watching. Please subscribe. Follow me. Uh, get all the updates. This is daily. I will find something to talk about every day while I'm on hunger strike. And tomorrow is going to be interesting. It's going to be how I've been treated by the mental health team. So, thank you. Good night. Speak to you tomorrow.